The masters of the sword that thrived during Japan's feudal era were mostly men of nobility, living by a strict code that upheld honor above everything else. Make no mistake, these were vicious warriors capable of unimaginable brutality, governed by a society that demanded such ruthlessness. In the world of the samurai, women held a very particular space. They were wedded off to secure political alliances and bearing and raising strong sons that could continue the heritage. This is why it was such a rare sight to behold, a woman taking up the sword, fighting on the battlefields, and protecting their households. Trained to become just as lethal as the men, these women were very few and far between. They were the Onamusha the female samurai. When one thinks of ancient Japan, what comes to mind immediately are the armor-clad warriors that brandished their infamous blades, the katana. They are the samurai, and they have shaped the nation's history and culture. Emerging around the 10th century during the Heian period, the samurai were initially military nobility serving the imperial court and regional nobles. They offered protection in return for land or patronage. Their existence was born out of necessity due to the distant imperial capital's ability to control the far-flung provinces and maintain order. The samurai filled this power vacuum, shaping the military, political, and social landscape of Japan. Over time, the samurai evolved into a well-defined caste. These warriors were distinct from the rest of society, set apart by their military abilities, discipline, and devotion to Bushido, the code of the samurai that embodied values such as loyalty and personal integrity. In fact, the samurai had privileges that would now be considered strange and cruel. If a commoner were to interact with them poorly and not adhere to the strict codes of conduct, a samurai could strike them down. However, the samurai were not mere barbarians that struck down their enemies at the behest of their lords. They were administrators contributing to the governance and structure of the country at the time. As a result, they possessed significant political influence, leading sometimes to brutal power struggles with the nobility. After all, despite being lower in class than the nobles, the samurai had actual power and influence thanks to their military might. These power struggles were a constant undercurrent in the complex political arena of feudal Japan. As the samurai gained power, the tension between them and the court nobility grew. This came to a head during the Kamakura period, when the samurai under the leadership of the first shogun, Minamoto Yoritomo, were able to establish a parallel military government, effectively sidelining the imperial court. In this social system, women's roles were quite defined but not inconsequential. Because they were such a combative and strategic group of people, the samurai saw marriage as a powerful tool. Love and affection were not the main components in the union of two individuals. It was a strategic alliance binding two samurai families together, often with political and military implications. Women were expected to bear children and raise strong sons to continue the lineage. Women were considered diplomatic assets, a bargaining chip to foster peace, resolve disputes, or strengthen bonds with other powerful clans. While their duties were largely domestic, some exceptions to these roles emerged, hinting at the existence of a subset of women who were prepared to fight or even step onto the battlefield. These exceptional women, known as Onamusha, provide a fascinating insight into the intersection of gender, warfare, and societal expectations in samurai society. The Onamusha were warriors. They were trained in strategy, martial arts, and wielding weapons with a proficiency that matched their male counterparts. The term Onamusha translates to women warrior, and it is indeed a fitting name. These female samurai were often born into samurai families and trained from a young age to protect their households and honor. The Onamusha didn't shy away from fighting, but instead embraced it. Their training involved mastery of the Naginata, a long pole weapon with a curved blade at the end favored for its range and versatility. It was mostly effective against a mounted or armored opponent. While it was their weapon of choice, the Onamusha was also well versed in other martial arts forms. Archery and small hand weapons like the Kaiken, a type of dagger, were part of their training. 
However, their training wasn't exclusive to the physical aspects of combat. It was similar to male samurai training, which involved tactics and leadership skills. Many Onomusha were wives of samurai men and were expected to protect their homes and families in times of war. With their husbands on the battlefield, these women were the last line of defense against invaders. Much like their male counterparts, these women were also expected to die with honor. Nevertheless, Onomusha's influence was not confined to their own homes. They significantly impacted the regional politics of the era. Using their unique skill sets, they would often provide tactical support and leadership to their husbands and clans, providing an edge in the power struggles that characterized the period. While the Onamusha were already a rare subset of women, there was an even rarer subset, the ones that actually fought on the battlefields alongside the men. Among the Onamusha who distinguished themselves on the battlefield, few names are as renowned as Tomoe Gozen. She was born in the late 12th century. Her name carries the honorific Gozen, typically bestowed upon ladies of high birth, suggesting Tomoe was born into a family of high status. However, her lineage pales compared to the legacy she carved on the battlefield. Tomo's exploits were well documented in the Haiki Monogatari or the Tale of the Haiki, a medieval epic chronicling the Genpei War, a civil conflict that raged between the Taira and Minamoto clans. In the text, Tomo was described as a warrior worth a thousand, ready to confront a demon or a god, mounted or on foot. Tomo was a skilled horse rider who could handle unbroken horses with ease. She was skilled in the sword and the bow, and it is said she was as comfortable in the thick of battle as any man. Her most famous exploit came during the Battle of Awazu in 1184. As the tale goes, her leader, Minamoto Yoshinaka, ordered her to leave the battlefield because he feared he was going to lose. It's unclear whether he wanted her to leave because he didn't want Tomo to fall into the enemy's hands, or because Yoshinaka wanted to die with his foster brother. Tomo, however, did not leave the battlefield without a fight. She rode headlong into the enemy ranks, challenging and defeating the strongest warrior she could find. She is said to have beheaded him, presenting the gruesome trophy to Yoshinaka as a symbol of her tenacity. When Yoshinaka died, Tomoe was never seen again. Her ultimate fate remains shrouded in mystery. Some accounts suggest she was captured and turned into a concubine or wife. Some suggest she escaped and became a nun. Despite the obscurity of her later years, Tomo's legendary status remains unchallenged. Moving from the battlefield to the political arena, the story of the Onamusha would be incomplete without the mention of Hojo Masako, also known as the Nun Shogun. She was born into the powerful Hojo clan in 1157 in Izu province. Masako's life was steeped in political intrigue and power struggles. Masako married Minamoto Yoritomo, the future founder and first shogun of the Kamakura shogunate, against her father's wishes. While Masako was deeply in love with Yoritomo, their marriage was also a strategic alliance. Over time, Masako's unwavering loyalty to Yoritomo was a critical factor in his rise to power, helping him navigate the treacherous political landscape. Despite being the wife of the shogun, Masako was not a woman to be relegated to the sidelines. She was known for her political savvy and strong will, becoming deeply involved in the shogunate's politics and proving herself as an influential force behind the scenes. Following the death of her husband in 1199, Masako donned the robes of a Buddhist nun, a common practice among high-status widows at the time. However, this did not signify a withdrawal from public life. Quite the contrary, Masako continued to play a significant role in the political machinations of the Kamakura shogunate. As the mother of the second and third Kamakura shoguns, she wielded considerable influence, effectively ruling as regent during her son's reigns and keeping the reins of power within the Hojo family. This earned her the moniker Nun Shogun. Her reign marks one of the few periods in Japanese history when a woman held such significant political power. While not as widely known and as synonymous with the warriors of Japan, the Onamusha proved themselves competent enough to play both on the battlefield and in politics. Their legacies and contributions shall forever live in the annals of Japanese history.
We hope today's video helped inform you about some of the lesser known topics in Asian history and as always thanks for watching.